The Connie Corso is one of my personal favourite dog breeds amongst all of the Guardian breeds. This amazing dog is immensely protective by nature and yet extremely devoted and affectionate towards its owners. But choosing a Connie Corso as your next dog may prove to be the worst choice you have ever made. And in this video, we're going to look at five main reasons why you should not get a Connie Corso. Welcome back to the Femrear Connie Corso Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrearCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the amazing Connie Corso, then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect Connie Corso companions. So if you're a lifelong Connie Corso lover or just thinking about starting your journey with a new Connie Corso puppy, then I promise you this channel is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button and turning on that notification bell so you never miss a future Connie Corso video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll jump straight into the first and very important reason why you should not choose the Connie Corso as your new canine companion. And that reason at number five is that you have never owned a dog breed before. If you are a novice dog owner, the Connie Corso is not a good place for you to start. To be fair, I'm not saying that it is impossible to succeed with a Connie Corso as your first dog, but it is very challenging, risky, and potentially even deadly. Think about it this way. If you make mistakes in raising and training, say, a Labrador puppy, you might have an annoying dog on your hands. In the worst case, it might even destroy some of your furniture. But if you make the very same mistakes with a Connie Corso, your dog might kill a child out on the street or seriously injure an innocent visitor. These dogs can weigh up to 150 pounds and have massive jaws. In case of an attack, these jaws can cause extreme trauma to the human body, so much so that the victim of attack can easily die from it. If your Connie Corso bites or, God forbid, kills a person, the consequences are obviously life-destroying. Not only will your dog be put down, but you yourself could end up facing criminal charges and that is not even taken into consideration the suffering on the part of the victim and their family. Think about this very carefully. If you are a novice dog owner and you want to get a Connie Corso, are you willing to risk such dire consequences of your beginner mistakes? And for these reasons, I have to say, if you are an inexperienced dog owner, you should definitely not consider getting a Connie Corso. Now that might have sounded pretty dramatic and very negative and does that really happen and yes, yes it does. Working as a canine behaviourist who specialises in large powerful garden breeds and in particular I'm working a lot with Connie Corsos right now because of their booming popularity and because I'm becoming known for my success rates with Connie Corsos, unfortunately I have a lot of first hand experience of seeing how bad it can go and how often it goes badly when somebody comes to me having had a Connie Corso as their first dog. But let's wrap up this one and we'll move to reason number four. And reason number four is for people that don't really want to train their dog. Now, personally, I firmly believe in vital importance of training and socializing any dog breed to a decent level of obedience and then a high level of manners. But with the large and powerful Connie Corso, this is even more important. Also, it is worth remembering that the ancestors of our modern Connie Corsos were the legendary Molossus dogs, the war dogs of the ancient Roman Empire. Therefore, the instinct to protect their owners with their lives is still present in the genetic makeup of today's Connie Corso. Add to that the breed pronounced wariness of strangers and you have a potent mix of powerful instinctual drives. These instincts alone should be reason enough why the Corso absolutely requires an experienced hand to teach and guide. It. And this teaching is guiding is an ongoing task. It is not done overnight and you cannot simply delegate it to a dog trainer. You yourself have to be able to control your dog at all times. These incredibly strong Mastiff require lots and lots of work. Training must be conducted with a firm but gentle hand and socializing has to be done skillfully and right from day one. Calm, consistent leadership is absolutely crucial. Therefore, I think it's pretty safe to say if you're not interested interested in really putting much effort into training your dog, then you should absolutely not be considering a Connie Corso. 
And before we dive into the reason number three, this is a good time to mention it. If you are interested and you want to put in that level of work and ethic, but you're not necessarily quite sure what to do and when, that is exactly why I created my Perfect Puppy course. It's a step-by-step guide to making sure that you absolutely nail down obedience, manners, and socialization dedicated from my experience of working with breeds like Connie Corso. So if you're interested in our Perfect Puppy program, the link to that is down in the description box, or you can go to fenreardogtraining.com. But again, it's easier if you just find the link in the description, but let's get straight back to the video. Now, reason number three is that the Connie Corso is extremely sensitive. Now, this may come as a huge surprise to you, given that we have just said about this ancient breed, but it is true, as I can attest from the vast personal experience, both of a personal owner and a trainer to many Connie Corsos, they are very, very sensitive, and they could become dangerously reactive when treated unfairly or even violently. Reactive dogs in general are prone to biting, and reactive Corsos are prone to causing a lot more harm when doing so. Therefore, very heavy-handed training methods are an absolute no-go with this Italian breed. As Connie Corsos will be able to attest, getting frustrated, losing your composure, and yelling at your dog will get you absolutely nowhere. Instead, you must be their calm, consistent leader at all times. The person that they can look up to for guidance and direction in any given situation. You have to have patience with your dog, and lots of it. Even more so because of them being a giant breed, Corsos mature very slowly whereas middle-sized dogs are fairly grown up at 12 to 18 months these guys are not fully developed until they're approximately three to four years old and three years of first puppy-like and then teenage-like behavior I promise you is a long time and during this time these sensitive giants are very susceptible to outside influences for example if another dog attacks and bites them in their puppy or teenage phase they might develop serious dog-to-dog aggression negative experience of people are of course even more disastrous and it takes a lot of time, patience, and hard work to iron out any negative impressions that your Corso received before reaching maturity. So if you are not yet a patient, calm, and consistent canine leader, then you should most certainly not be considering getting a Connie Corso. So reason number two is that you want a laid-back, low-energy canine companion. Say you are looking for a giant guardian breed with very low energy levels. Preferably, you want a low-maintenance dog who enjoys a relaxed, productive, dominantly sedentary lifestyle. Your perfect canine companion would love to hang out with you on the couch for hours on end, only requiring a couple of very short walks during the day. Now, don't get me wrong, that is absolutely fine, and there are Mastiff breeds around who perfectly fit that bill. For example, the Bull Mastiff or the English Mastiff might be a great choice for you if that sounds like you. And whilst the Connie Corso does absolutely love cuddling up to their owners on the couch, they are also an active breed with a strong prey and work drive. This prey drive needs to be channeled into constructive avenues such as play, obedience deals, or tracking work. Also, Corsos rank higher on the intelligence and trainability scale than most other Mastiff breeds. Therefore, they need a lot more mental stimulation to become and remain well-balanced canine companions in all scenarios and all situations. Taking your Connie Corso for extended walks and giving them at least one real good off-leash run a day is a must. If you do not provide them with ample physical and mental exercise, they can easily become bored. And a bored Connie Corso can decide that it is time to put up those giant jaws to work, simply to vent off some pent-up energy. The consequences for your furniture, I promise you, will be extremely dire. Now, for all of those reasons, I would have to state that you should not get a Connie Corso unless you are willing to drastically alter your lifestyle to be able to provide that amount of physical exercise and mental stimulation. And my reason in the number one spot is that you want to have your dog live outside. Now, there is nothing wrong with wanting your dog to live outside of the house, providing they have sufficient space to move around in, as well as a sheltered and comfortable sleeping scenario. Many dogs will do absolutely fine and often prefer to live outside. However, the Connie Corso is not one of those dogs. They absolutely require you as their owner to spend a lot of time with them. And I mean a lot of time. These giant guardians form extraordinary 
extraordinarily strong bonds with their owners that are very prone to separation anxiety. And whilst it is good to gradually train your Connie Corso to be alone for several hours at a time, this training takes, again, lots and lots of patience, simply because keeping close company with their loved ones is so ingrained into the breed. Now, your Connie Corso will love nothing more than to spend time with you in the house. Now, this is not to say that they are clingy, but they strongly prefer having you near them. In fact, this deep affection and love of a Connie Corso for their owner is one of the most endearing traits of this fantastic looking breed. So if you absolutely cannot allow your dog to live with you in the home, at least most of the time, then you should definitely not be considering a Connie Corso. Now, if any of those five reasons why not to choose a Connie Corso as your canine companion apply to you, then don't despair. This does not mean that you can never safely own one of these beautiful Italian Mastiffs. You simply have a little bit of work ahead of you, building up your leadership skills build up your knowledge about canine behavior, as well as gathering first-hand experience with other large Mastiff breeds. After you've trained yourself up to be an experienced, calm, consistent canine leader, then you might very well be ready to share your life with a glorious Connie Corso. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below. And don't forget that if you are new here to make sure that you subscribe, we have two dedicated Connie Corso videos coming to this channel every single week. So I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femrear Connie Corso Show.